You may be considering filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, but you're not sure whether you should do it with or without an attorney. Are you also wondering whether, you know, what the success rate is of filing it on your own? Well, that's what we're going to cover today. So let's get started. Welcome to Ascend's Finance YouTube channel, where we cover Chapter 7 bankruptcy and help you understand the costs, pros and cons, and etc. to help you be more informed and get you out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. My name is Justin, and let's begin. In this video, I'm going to cover 10 different steps to file Chapter 7 without an attorney. Just to be clear, though, this is not legal advice. This is purely informational only. The big question is, should you file without a bankruptcy attorney? And what does that even look like? So let's dive into kind of how to file without an attorney and getting that all summed up. So before I go too further, to, to personalize it to your situation, we actually built a free do-it-yourself bankruptcy calculator that I actually included in the description below that ideally will provide you the cost and the durations, the pros and cons of doing a bankruptcy on your own and comparing that to potentially working with an attorney. So you can kind of evaluate whether it makes sense to do it yourself or work with someone. Also, if you like this video, click in the like button below. It's always encouraging to me. Also, if you I like to see additional content to help you get out of debt, please subscribe as we make new videos weekly. Okay, so let's get started. Now, how to file bankruptcy without an attorney. So the first step generally to filing a bankruptcy case without an attorney is gathering all the necessary documents. So you're going to gather information and documents before completing your bankruptcy forms. You're going to want to get all of this together. That's going to have information on your debts, assets, income, and most likely your expenses. First thing you probably could do is get a free copy of your credit report. There could be multiple different ways, whether you have the free one for the year through the government or looking at something like Credit Karma, you should be able to access a free copy of your report. But in addition to your credit reports, you should also have some sort of documentation that's related to your tax returns, most likely for the last two years. Also, that has information on your income, expenses, debt, and assets. Step two, you're going to want to complete the Chapter 7 means test. Before you go too further, you're going to want to complete the Chapter 7 means test as this is going to help you determine whether or not you actually actually meet the income requirements for a chapter seven. In order to qualify and actually file a seven, you generally have to pass the means test by either being below the income threshold or passing one of the second part of the means test. Okay. Step three. Now, assuming that you pass the chapter seven means test, you're going to want to complete your credit counseling course. Now, this course is actually the first of the two bankruptcy courses that's actually required to file bankruptcy without an attorney and actually obtain your bankruptcy discharge. And the goal here, right, is discharge. Dismissal is not the goal. That means you didn't complete the bankruptcy or you had to dis dismiss it in some sense. And so we want to reach discharge. Um, that means you're forgiven from the debt. Okay. Now, step four, we want to complete those bankruptcy forms that you have all together. Now, there's going to be quite a few. I think there's probably around 24 forms roughly altogether in terms of for the chapter seven. Now, depending on your information and your case, you could see potentially 70 or more pages within all these forms. You should be able to access all these though through the official bankruptcy or online, and they should have all the different forms, whether it's chapter seven, chapter 13, all the forms there for you. Now, after you've gotten all these forms together, you want to be able to get the financial part together, which is the filing fee. Now, the filing fee for a chapter seven case is $338. Now, this is going to go directly to the court. This is not relative to state. This is a court fee just for filing. Now you must pay this fee to the United States bankruptcy court where you file your bankruptcy without the attorney. Now most courts only accept cash or money orders. So check with the court before filing your forms. Now, if you cannot pay the filing fee, you actually may qualify to pay your fee in installments or potentially waive the fee altogether. You must file a separate form to request installment payments. Now, if you can't afford the installment payments, then it kind of comes back to the first piece of potentially waiving the fees altogether. There should be a whole nother form for that, maybe called the filing we fee waiver form. Now, step six, you're gonna wanna file all these forms. Now that you have them complete, you wanna file them. So you're gonna print all your bankruptcy forms. I believe they should be just printed on one side of the paper you're going to want to review each page for any errors or mistakes, making sure everything is accurate. Now, once they're all correct, you'll sign the forms and all the places indicated and get those all together. Now, you must attach copies of evidence of the last six months of your income before the month you file. Now, also, you want to have proof of the credit counseling by providing the certificate as well as potentially the application to have the fee waived or if you're paying in installments. Now, step seven, mail required forms to the chapter seven trustee. Now you're gonna wanna open all the mail from the chapter seven trustee, bankruptcy court, or any creditor most likely immediately there. And then the information in those letters could actually potentially impact your case. Now, if you don't follow up with speed, your case potentially could be dismissed and, and you don't wanna lose any property potentially that you wanted to keep. Because as we know, right, the goal is discharge. We don't want a dismissal. Step eight, 
you're going to want to complete your debtor education course. Now, most companies that offer credit counseling course actually offer the debtor education course. And so you're going to want to complete the second bankruptcy course as soon as possible and then file the certificate of completion with the bankruptcy court as well. Step nine, you're going to want to have your first meeting, and this is going to be the 341 first meeting of creditors. Now, this meeting is held generally about 30 to 45 days actually you've after filed the bankruptcy case. The chapter seven trustee will most likely conduct this hearing. The trustee places you under an oath to ask you questions, but the questions should be relatively easy because they're based on the information that you actually provided in the form. So it should be relatively straightforward and I don't believe the meeting is too long. Step 10, you wanna take care of any secured loans. Now, generally secured debts are not gonna be discharged. Now, unless you were hoping to surrender the actual property attached to that loan, you'll keep making payments on those. Now, if you actually go ahead and surrender the vehicle or the property associated to the loans, the creditors most likely are not allowed to demand anything else after that. They cannot come after you for any unpaid debt after they potentially auction off the car. You know, you are forgiven from anything associated with that most likely. Now, like I was getting to earlier, you don't necessarily have to surrender it. So if you want to keep your car in this case, you have a few different options. First, one thing you could actually just reaffirm the loan. So pretty much meaning that you agree that the loan stands outside of this bankruptcy case, you'll keep paying. Now, if you default on the loan, the lender can repossess as normal and sue you and come after you for anything. So it's basically almost if, as if you never filed bankruptcy between you and the lender there. You're keeping it out. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. Now, of course, if you have any questions at all, please, please don't hesitate to comment below and reach out because we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Now, definitely don't hesitate to give us a call or text though, as you can reach us directly by reaching us out at 833-272-3631. Thanks so much for watching.